Welcome to Unit 10 of Finance. This is your online instructor, Diana Block. In this week, you're going to have a pretty in-depth assignment. First of all, let's talk about the reading. The reading material is going to be covering, where is it, chapter, um, chapters 16 of your book. I'm sorry about that. Chapter 16. And in chapter 16, you're going to be talking about networking capital. So let's start off with the term working capital and what is that. Working capital are the assets and liabilities that we're using to operate the firm on a daily basis. So what we're actually talking about is the current assets, and the current liabilities. So when we're talking about current assets, we remember from accounting, current assets are cash, accounts receivable, inventory. And then your current liabilities is your payable accounts and uh, things like salary and taxes payable and um, short-term credit accounts. So that's what we're talking about when we're discussing working capital, the assets and liabilities that we're using to actually operate the firm. So when we talk about networking capital, that's not the same thing as the term working capital. Sometimes people use them interchangeably and it really shouldn't be. Networking capital is talking about the difference between your gross working capital and any spontaneous financing. So gross working capital is your total investment in assets, in current assets to operate the firm. And so in order to operate the firm, you're going to need funds. You're going to need funds to maintain inventory, pay the salaries, and all those things that happen as a result of operating a company. So you've got something called spontaneous financing. Spontaneous financing is financing that flows in with your sales activity. If you're making sales, there's there's cash available. And this is during the normal operation of the business, this cash flows in. So you're not uh, borrowing from uh, creditors or lenders. This is just cash that comes in as a result of your sales activity, as a result of you uh, running the business. And of course, some of that funds is earmarked for accounts payables and accounts accruables, uh, accruals, such as payroll. But remember, we, even with payroll, we only pay that most companies every week or every two weeks. So until we actually pay the employees what's owed to them, that cash that we have available is just in the firm. And we could actually use that to finance other activities as long as we have the funds available when it's time to pay the employees. So that kind of spontaneous financing is part of what we use to run the day-to-day -day activities of the firm. And so networking capital then, going back to that, is the difference between our gross working capital, our total investment in uh, assets to operate the firm, minus any spontaneous financing, and what's left is the networking capital. So here's the equation you're going to see for networking capital. Current assets minus the current liabilities is going to give you the networking capital. Now in Chapter 16, you're going to go into a lot more detail about working capital um, and the nuances related to that. But I want to use some of this video time this week to talk about the assignment because this is a pretty important assignment this week. And so I want to uh, let you go ahead and read the textbook material yourself and then I'm going to give you some information to review about the assignment just to make sure we're all on the same page with that. So this assignment is going to be similar to what you did in week eight in that it has multiple tabs. You're going to work one long problem, except this is worth twice as many points as that week eight problem. And so you will see that you've got an introduction page. It's going to tell you about the problem. There's some important information on here um, about the bonds, about the capital rationing, uh, about how you should complete this assignment. So make sure you look at all of this. And once you have everything done, I suggest also coming back to this page again and reading through it to make sure you did everything according to the instructions on here. So the next thing you've got is some financial information. And so look, it gives you some information about how many uh, bonds are issued, 30-year bonds. They were issued 10 years ago. So what that tells you is that there are 30-year bonds issued 10 years ago. So there's 20 years remaining. That information may be important uh, when you're calculating the value of the bonds. So 
keep in mind there's some information in here that isn't specifically stated but you can deduce it from what's given here so it has a thousand dollar par value the coupon rate is five percent so what that is telling you is that the payments on these bonds are five percent per year of the face value um, so that's how you determine how much your coupon payment is. That is one thing that a few people missed on the last problems like this in week eight is they didn't have the coupon payment correctly. Um, and so the coupon payment, when you calculate that on this other page to get the value of the bond, where it has payment here, it doesn't use the exact same terminology. We use coupon in the information, but payment here here is where you're calculating the coupon payment. This is where this goes. So when you put the payment here, it's 5% of the face value, and we're also going to assume that it's twice a year. So it's going to be five half of 5% twice a year. But that is the information we're looking for right here. So if you missed that last time, make sure you um, realize that this field relates to the coupon payment. Um, and then there's additional information about what similar bonds are now selling at. So, you know, that's the market rate. Um, it talks about what the preferred stock is, um, the details of that, how much the dividend, and also the market rate. Um, one thing I also wanted to mention, because a few people missed it, is this information right here. Some people didn't know what this was. And there's an appendix in the back of your book. Um, in the seven for pages 740 ish maybe 743 check in that area um, is the appendixes that explain though that provide the tables for present value of a future amount that's what PVFA means present value of a future amount so what you'll do is you'll look K is the rate so the rates are across the top in those tables and the N is the number of periods the periods are down the left on those tables in the appendixes that I'm talking about and so what you'll do use those tables for is to get a factor that will tell you for this rate and this number of periods a factor that you can multiply times that payment amount um, so that you can calculate the solution to this problem. Um, another way you could do that if that seems too much or too confusing is you can just use Excel um, and use the present value features like we discussed earlier in the class and just determine the price of the bond using Excel and fill that information in um, from Excel and multiply it times the number of bonds missing uh, or number of bonds issued. So you can just calculate the present value of the bond in Excel using the methods we used earlier in the class, the present value function, um, or you can use the appendices in pages 740-ish, 740 to 749 in your textbook and you'll look up the factor for the rate and the number of periods that you're uh, calculating for. So there's two different ways to get the market value of the debt and you're going to have to estimate the present value either way. You can use the present value using the tables or just use Excel to do that. So I know that was kind of confusing for some people on the last set of problems. And as you saw in the last set of problems, or you may have, that if you mess up on one area of it, it's going to throw all everything off at the bottom because your weights have to total 100%. So if either any one of these amounts is wrong, you're going to, it's going to throw off your final balance here. So you want to make sure that you complete all of this based on the information given here. Then you're going to move on to calculating the cost of capital. Most people did pretty well on this portion of it. The formulas are all spelled out for you. The only thing that you really can double check, the only way that I saw people missing something here, is if they didn't enter the formula correctly um, in the box where they're putting the answer. But remember, this whole section really is telling you the formula. You just have to enter the formula to get the answers. And so then we're going to have a capital rationing problem. So you're going, you've done this before, calculating the breakpoints. 
and this you have actually seen before. This is similar to the other problem where we're going to compare the cost of capital to the specific projects and then the last page you're going to decide which projects you should accept and reject. So it's very similar to that problem from week eight. I just wanted to point out a couple of things that a lot of people missed on that related to the bonds, mostly related to the bonds, how to calculate the value of the bond and how to calculate the coupon payments. So if you have any questions about this, be sure to give me a call or send me an email early in the week so we can talk about it and I'll have time to give you feedback before the final project is due. And make sure you read Chapter 16 on Working Capital Management. Also, keep in mind that next week is the last week, and it's a short week. It ends on uh, Thursday. Uh, so as you have time this week, make sure you're also preparing to study for your final exams for next week. I look forward to talking to you in the discussion, and have a great week.